So this came up because Mr Grown Frugal's tried out some of those recipe kit boxes and they are brilliant at upping your confidence and helping you learn how to cook but they are so expensive, like really expensive. So I've been racking my brains thinking how can I help Mr Grown Frugal on his learning to cook journey without me being in the kitchen standing over him and bossing him about because I'm so used to cooking and that's my domain. So if that sounds like you or if you've got children or grandchildren and especially if they're teenagers and they don't want you hovering you could also try out this method of developing a personalized recipe card just for that person and taking into account everything you know about them so it can really act as a soft scaffold to them learning without you hanging over them and interfering at every minute which is what I do. I can't help it. So the demo shows you some of the ideas I've had that are relevant for us, but you may have different things that suit you and your family and your friends. So I hope this just gives you a really good idea of what this app can do. And again, isn't it amazing to have an app that gives us so many choices about how we can use it. So let's get into it. I'm going to do this by screen sharing my iPad. That's my favourite way of using Paprika. So so let's get into it and show you what I've been up to. And so for this demo, I'm going to use my cumin spiced tomato lentil and chard soup, which is an instant pot recipe. And if you've been here before, you'll know I love my instant pot, my electric pressure cooker. So this is a good one. So we'll get that recipe open. So this is a really simple recipe, but it does involve use of the instant pot. And Mr. Grown Frugal's not used to the instant pot. So this is a good one as a demo. And once you've got that open, you can kind of skim it and just check it looks kind of suitable for learning. And to do this, we're going to make a duplicate copy of the recipe that is going to be our personalised recipe card. So to do that, you'll press the three little dots at the top menu, just next to the heart there. And when you do that, you will get an option to duplicate. So click that duplicate. And now, if you can see, we've now got cumin, spice, tomato, lentil and chard soup in the Instant Pot copy. So I'm going to change that. Mr. Growing Frugal's cumin, spice, tomato, lentil and chard soup in the Instant Pot. And that lets me know that this is the one that I've adapted. So we'll save that. So in the top right, you've got a save. And I do save a lot as I go along when I'm doing this. Better be safe than sorry. So you may have come across the ability to add photos to your own recipe cards. If you're downloading a recipe card from the internet, it often brings in the image. Um, but for our own recipes, it would be about taking some photos of recipes as you go along. Okay, so I'm going to click into the photo section and the little right hand arrow that's there. So what we're going to do is to add photos to our recipe card to help your family member out at any part where you know they're likely to get stuck or need a bit of guidance or the kind of things that they struggle with as a new cook as anyone would. So let's have a look at the photos I've taken as an example for this. So you could use the camera at this point and take photos as you go along. Or in my case, I'm using some photos I've already got in my photo library. So here's some of the ideas I had. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is to add a thumbnail. I've already got a nice pretty picture from when I did a YouTube video on this soup. So we'll put that in as a thumbnail and Paprika will just insert that for us. And then I want to add some more photos. So I'll go back to my photo library and the kinds of photos that I thought might be helpful were one to show things like the instant pot and making sure that the vent is closed on the instant pot because it's an absolute disaster if you don't do that. And then another photo showing how to strip the charred leaves. So the hand blender to show chopping the chard and to show putting the chard in at the very end. And then I'm also wanting to show which instant pot and which instant pot lid we're using because I've got a bit of a collection going. So anything that you think might be useful to your person, what do they stumble on? What are they not sure about? What is it hard to do when you're first starting out cooking? And you really have to get your head into the kind of learner's 
mind as best you can for this, which is to kind of drop away all of that experience you've got in cooking and think what must it be like to be presented with these ingredients you're not sure what to do with and you just don't have that core knowledge that we gain over years and years of cooking. So as best you can, keep your person in mind and have a think, what would they find hard? And if a photo would help them, a photo really is worth more than a thousand words when it comes to visual stuff like cooking. So we're going to add these in various parts of the recipe card to really personalise it and help your person learn. So let's get the rest of the photos in and I'll show you how I'm going to use them. And if when you were putting your photos in, you chose the wrong one to put in as a thumbnail, it's very easy to change it. So just click on thumbnail, click on the word choose in blue there to the right, and then you can choose the right thumbnail for your recipe card. And that's done. So now you can see that in the recipe card, it's still the old recipe card, but we've now added a tailored bit at the beginning. So Mr. Grown Frugal knows this is his recipe card. And then we've added a photo. We've got my rating on. I'll probably take that rating off actually. And then I'm going to go into the info section and I'm actually going to take out this prep time and cook time because it means something to me, but actually it makes it look like the soup's very, very quick to make. And of course it isn't because it sits in the pressure cooker for a little bit of time. So I'm going to take away that so there's no pressure and I'm going to just simplify as much as possible. So now we've taken that out. I'll leave the categories as is, instant pot soups. You could, of course, create a specific category for your person. But for me, I'm just going to leave that as is and move on to the next section. So the next thing is to use the description box to add some extra information that will help your person be able to navigate their way through this recipe. So I'm going to say this is a vegan soup. So if Mr. Grown Frugal's cooking and I'm away, he's got a friend around who's vegan, he knows straight away that's vegan. And then also, I know he's not that confident about how long things last in the fridge. So I'll put store in the fridge for up to five days or freeze some in portion sizes for later. So you can use this description section for anything that it seems like it might be helpful for your person, the kind of thing you'd be muttering on about if you were in the kitchen with them. So now we're going on to the ingredients section. So the first thing I'll do is just check the ingredients over and just add any information or simplify it so that it's not just a shortlist for me but it would make sense to someone who's just coming across this recipe. So we've got olive oil, that's fine, a medium onion chopped, cumin, can of tomatoes, red lentils, dried thyme is fine, apple cider vinegar, chilli powder, vegetable stock. I will just add something there, make up using the vegetable bouillon powder in the cupboard. Four to six stalks of chard, leaves only, shred and optional, a squeeze of lemon juice. That's all pretty straightforward. So those ingredients look fine, but what I want to do is to also add in some extra sections in this ingredients part. So the first one I'm going to add, and I'm going to use the modified version of Markdown that Paprika uses for this. If you've not used that before, I did do a video on adding a web link to recipe cards that covers some of that or you can press this little question mark to the bottom right of this screen. If I click on that and it shows you the way that you use things like asterisks and underscores to help you add links and format the texts within these cards. So that probably doesn't make sense, but if you just watch me doing it, you will see that it's a really nice way actually of formatting text. So the first thing I want to do is have a section called from the garden in double asterisks and that's going to make it bold so it sort of sticks out under the ingredients list and I'm going to add for this one in there that the chard is in that the chard is in the garden and just give some brief harvesting instructions and now to make this even clearer I'm going to add an image so that finding the chard in the garden is really easy. So let's press return 
and then I'm going to click on this camera icon to the bottom right and here I've already saved a picture in my photos for this card of what the child actually looks like in the garden just coming to the end of its life here and I'll click I've clicked on the photo I want to add and then the top right the blue text says insert so I'm going to click that there it goes and it says photo 8 and then I'll return and then another section I want to put in here right there with the ingredients is going to be about equipment that's needed and so I'm going to put in a heading of equipment so I'm going to say the instant pot with the pressure cooker lid and then again I've already added a photo of that so I'm going to do the same method again click on the camera button find the photo of the instant pot and click on it and then click insert and that's going to add that for me and then underneath I'm also going to show that we need the hand blender immersion blender stick blender whatever it is that you call it and again I'm going to use this camera button I'm going to find a photo of the hand blender insert it and off we go and then if I do a save now and show you how that looks so now you can see we've got the ingredients as normal and now we've got a section from the garden with just a little bit of explanation on how to get the chard and how to harvest it and then underneath we've got the equipment that will be needed so the instant pot with the pressure cooker lid not the instant pot crisp because that's a very different lid and if you don't know what the instant pot crisp is oh have a look at my video it's amazing um, and then also the hand blender will be needed and in our house that usually means looking for two parts that have got separated and are scattered somewhere in the kitchen so to make this recipe smooth I know Mr Grown Frugal likes to get everything out at the beginning which is exactly what the real chefs do and not have chaos in the middle of cooking which is what I do um, so instead of writing this card for me I'm writing it for him and actually he's right we should all be more organized and do the mise en place get all our stuff ready at the beginning and it makes cooking so much easier but hey I'm not very good at following my own advice so that's all saved and you've got your, your images right there in the card now and then we'll go back to edit so top right, still editing the same recipe card. We've added the description. We've added in some extra sections from the garden and equipment. And now I'm having a look at the directions. And I will rewrite anything on the directions that might need a little bit more detail or the language changing so that it's understandable to someone other than me. So if we look at item number six here, put the lid onto the instant pot and move the weight to ceiling and set the time on manual high to six minutes. Now for someone who's not used to using electric pressure cookers, the using them can be quite scary and they're brilliant nowadays. They've got loads of safety features, but they're still intimidating to use until you've got used to them. So for this, what I wanna do is add a kind of reassuring photo to this section of number six so I've gone into number six I press enter to start a new line and I'm going to follow exactly the same process and click on the camera button at the bottom and then click on a screenshot I've annotated from earlier that shows you what I mean by move the weight to ceiling and in fact I'll probably make that into italics so you can make something into italics by adding an underscore either side of the text and again, remember this little question mark at the bottom right will show you how to do that. And you can use your emojis in the recipes if you want, just to make it a bit of fun. So go off and chill out while the Instant Pot does all of the work. We can put in a beach picture and a wink. That might make them smile halfway through. And so I'd go through all of the instructions, rewrite it so it's more friendly, so it's a bit fun, so it makes it a bit of an adventure, and all of that will help learning. And don't forget, you can add emoticons or you can add extra photos to clarify anything at all as you go through. So let's have a look what else we might add. While the super still hot, drop in the shredded chard and stir until wilted. So here I'm going to add some pictures to help out with the whole kind of chard mystery for people who haven't used it so I'm going to add in pictures here of me taking the charred leaf off the stalk and also of how to shred the chard which you do by kind of rolling it like a little cigar um, and then shredding it's quite a nice thing to do actually so we'll insert those into there 
and then check the rest of the recipe and add any other pictures that will be helpful. And then finally, I'm going to use the end of this recipe card to add in some extra little bits to help out Mr. Graham Frugal as he's doing this recipe. So firstly, what I want to do is to give him a link to a video that shows you exactly how to prepare chard and how to do that cutting up like a cigar rolling method that I just mentioned. So there is a lovely video on YouTube for this. So that's the one I'm going to use. So let's see. Watch... A video on how to prepare and shred chard and to make a web link the again in the question mark here will show you how to do it but it's very simple to make a web link we do the text that we want to show with a square bracket around it so square bracket at the beginning square bracket at the end there goes the usual light airplane overhead. I hope that's not causing you too many problems. And then to add the actual web link, we open a normal bracket and let's grab that web link from YouTube. Here it is, how to prepare chard by Naturally Ella. This is a lovely little video if you haven't seen it. So I'll add this in. Paste that in and then add in a bracket at the end and then just click enter. I'll show you in a moment how that's become a magical web link. And then finally in the notes, I'm going to add in some substitutions. So if you're not used to cooking and you find, for instance, you haven't got any, uh, let's say, apple cider vinegar in this recipe, that can really stump you and you think you can't make the recipe. So if there's anything in the recipe that you're teaching on where there are kind of really common substitutions, that's really helpful for the recipe itself and also just helps someone learn more what you can kind of swap in and out very easily. So I'm going to do another header here. So I'll use the two asterisks and I'll call it, oops, put the caps lock on and substitutions. I think that's right. And I'll say if we are out of any of the ingredients, try these swaps with the asterisks at the end. And then I'll say cider, cider vinegar use red or white wine vinegar time check the garden strip off the fresh thyme leaves from the stalk and use double the amount of dried so that's a rule for most fresh herbs. Oh, I've got thyme, eaves, thyme leaves. So that's a good guide for most fresh herbs. If you're using dried herbs and it's one teaspoon, then for fresh herbs, you'd use at least two because the flavor's really intensified on the dry herbs. And then chard, if we don't have any chard or it's just too much to go out there, maybe it's the middle of winter, then you could use four blocks of frozen spinach instead. So what we're doing here is really enabling someone to, to learn and adapt and these are the sort of things that are probably embedded deep in your brain but will help a new cook learn how to get creative with cooking and not always need to follow the recipe bit by bit. And This is why using this method rather than getting in those expensive recipe kits is better I think because someone is actually learning how to duck and dive as they're cooking and how to try things out and be experimental mental rather than just been given a tiny bit of everything um, which is lovely for an initial confidence build but I don't think in the long term is a great teaching tool because we don't what we don't want to do is to make cooking feel like it's a really troublesome thing and if you feel that because there's not apple cider vinegar you have to go to the shop and get some before you can get on with cooking that can be really off-putting and in these times actually quite impractical so as many substitutions as you can think of make a note of them here and again that will help someone really learn how we do this stuff 
So now we've got our photos in here. We've simplified the info. We've added a bit of a description there and some information about storage. We've added some stuff around ingredients, including if you're a gardener like me, that there may be ingredients in the garden rather than in the fridge and what equipment is needed. And I've included some photos there. And then we've adapted the recipe instructions and added some photos for areas that might be helpful. And in the notes section, we've added a video link and we've added some information on substitutions. So let's see what we've got now. OK, so now you can see an example of a finished personalised recipe card. So in the ingredients section, we've got from the garden and we've got a little picture here of the chard, what you're looking for when you go out to the raised beds. And then under equipment, I'm showing which instant pot I'm using, which lid it has. And I'm showing that you also need the hand blender. I'm getting those things together at the beginning at the same time as the other ingredients. It's going to make the cooking process that much smoother. And then over here, we've got the description saying it's a vegan soup and storage instructions. I've added some information where I need to. So number six here, if you remember, put the lid onto the instant pot, move the weight to ceiling and set the time on manual high. And I've added this screenshot showing where you move that little weight around to ceiling. This is on the old Instant Pot, the Duo 6 litre. And then further down here, I've added a little bit of information about the chard. So I've shown how I'm chopping it up there, shown how I'm taking the leaf off the stalks, which aren't used in this particular recipe. And then finally, in the notes section, I've added a link to a helpful video. So let's click that and see how it works. And there we are. We've got this video by Naturally Ella. Thank you, Naturally Ella, for this. So if they're not sure, you can actually watch a video and get even more instructions. Back to the card. And then at the very end in the notes section here, some ideas about substitution so that if we're out of the ingredients, here's some swaps you could use. And I've put that at the bottom because I think as a learner, it's a bit overwhelming sometimes to have too much information. So I like to format mine. So I've got ingredients and from the garden and the equipment this side. And then any kind of extra things that might be a bit more complicated or optional, I've got in the notes section. So a couple of ways of sharing this so the person who's learning to cook can get this into their version of Paprika. So if they're using Paprika on iOS here, it's under family sharing, so you only pay once for it, but they may have their own login. So if they've got their own login, you want to send the whole of this recipe card over to them. So you'd go to the top of the screen here and to the three little dots, click on that. And you can either email this recipe card. So if we're using the email function, all of the extra images won't be in the body of the email. And what they need to do is to ignore all of that there and go to the bottom of the email and click on this attachment here and that will open in their version of Paprika. You just click save and that will have all of the images in the inline text as you've seen me putting them on. So that's one way. And if you're on iOS like we are as a family, you can also use the airdrop function to send that recipe card straight over and it will go over there with all of the images within it and it works really well. So there we have it. Mr. Growing Frugal can just put in his name here and, and he'll find a recipe card for him with some additional steps, with some nice, easy, friendly instructions and some pictures to help really understand what this recipe is about. So I think that's a brilliant way of supporting anyone in the family or your friends who are using paprika to learn to cook without being that person that's standing over them and kind of hampering their own style and they can find their own way. And that's how you create a personalised recipe card. So please give me a like if you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time.